uh, definitely good to uh, take a seat back and uh, get my shoulder right, of course, but it was definitely something more on my uh, faith that I uh, needed. Uh, so I just relied on God in that moment. It was definitely tough not playing that week, but I feel like it was the best for this team and for the season. Jay, how about the, uh, the two big games you can you take it one at a time? Uh, yeah, any game you have to take one at a time. Uh, two two great opponents coming up, but right now our focus is on Michigan State and beating them. So uh, definitely, in, I feel like especially in college football, you can lose any week. So. Uh, we're prepared for Michigan State right now. CJ, I, I know your focus is on Michigan State, but there's you know, Heisman race going on, and just some people think you're the front runner. Do you care about that? What do you think about that? How are you approaching it? Yeah, right now I'm just focused on Michigan State. Uh, at the end of the day, we have two, hopefully three more games left, and at the end of the day, I just want to win those games uh, as a team. So whatever happens, happens. Of course, it's a blessing just to even have my name up there, but. I don't even look at that type of stuff. At least I try not to. I even tell my family members not to send stuff like that to me. Just to really focus in on that uh, on that opponent that week, which this week is Michigan State. I asked Chris what has most impressed him about you this year. He said it was really off the field stuff. How much pride do you take in that in developing as a leader? Because obviously you've never been coming in this year. It's kind of a challenge, I'm sure, to do that. How were you able to do that? And how proud are you of yourself, I guess, that yeah, uh, well, thank you. Thanks to God. I mean, I've always been in a leadership role ever since I've been five years old. Uh, I've always felt like uh, God has called me to be a leader, not not just only of uh, football, but of men in general. So, I mean, it's not it wasn't a surprise when I came to Ohio State and they asked me to be a leader or any. I always felt like I was one, no matter what the, uh, if I was a captain or not, whatever it was, I feel like I had to lead people. So I feel like more off the field, it's, showing people, uh, at least trying to lead people to Christ. And of course, I'm not perfect, but I try in a sense. And I feel like God's respect me for that. Of course, I have uh, great teammates like Cameron Babb, Master T, Xavier Johnson, uh, guys who are deep on their faith. So I try to really rely on them and uh, they help me a lot. Jay, Jay has been like, Coach has been really out of it that last week was pretty much your best week of preparation. Um, I guess what kind of clicked going into that game that maybe led to that? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I feel like every week I approach it the same. Every team I approach it the same. It's not like one week I watch less film just because I think it's a lesser opponent. I, I would never do that. That's how you get. That's how you lose. So, I mean, every week I watch, if not more than the same amount of every week. So, uh, I don't know why he thought that week was, but I mean, I think it's a good thing more than a negative. So, I mean, for the, I think the big difference from the. Uh, Nebraska and Purdue game is just we scored in the red zone. You know what I mean? So uh, we were moving the ball pretty well against Nebraska. Like we were moving up and down just fine, but we just didn't score in the red zone. So when we execute and we're rolling like that, I mean, you, you get to score a lot of points, which is fine. So. Do you pay attention to what other quarterbacks are doing around the country, like Bryce? Well, yeah, my, my buddies like Bryce, like my homies Bryce, uh, my homie uh, Matt Corral, uh, DJ, I watch DJ's games. Like the people who I know, like Derek King, I know he's out now, Jeff Sims. Uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks out there that are that I'm homies with, so I definitely try to watch other other guys' games, but I don't really try to critique them, and that's not yeah. my job. I, I watch the support. I know you both California guys, like, where that relationship with Bryce specifically, how that relationship kind of started. Yeah, uh, me and Bryce probably met in around like freshman year of high school or eighth grade, the eighth grade going into freshman year, uh, and we've been close ever since. So, I mean, me and Bryce often FaceTime, and we talk, and we won't even talk about football, we'll just talk about life, our parents. Uh, different things of that. Uh, so, I mean, it's good just to have a brother who is kind of going through the same path as you. And uh, I mean, he, he's big on his uh, faith, too. So, I mean, I just feel like our relationship is, is awesome. What was the circumstance of that meeting? How did y'all how, how did, how did meet when you were named? Like you said, when you were younger. For me and Bryce? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. It was probably just like, like a little seven on seven. Or uh, I know we used to play against each other in basketball when I played for the Inland Force. And he played for the, a team called the City Stars. Uh, so, I mean, I think that was the first time we ever originally met, but we didn't really know each other as football players. But uh, I remember the eighth grade, we actually played each other. Uh, he played for the IE Ducks. I played for the Snoop Dogg Steelers, and they, they whooped our butts that night. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they, they had a hell of a team. They got, like, I think they had, like, 18 dudes go D1 on that one team. We had, like, 10. So, I mean, yeah, it was. It, I think it's on YouTube. Man. I don't know. CJ, is there a sense that this, that this offense coming off last week that y'all have hit your stride now? I mean, is there a sense that? 
everything's clicking. I mean, what, what is your sense, especially during practice this week? What are you, what are you picking up on that tells you you guys are on the upward path? Uh, yeah, my, so my message this week has been to the guys is just really stay level-headed. I mean, there's there's no reason for us to ride ride the highs or ride the lows. I mean, at the end of the day, we have to execute every single game. It's not uh, – look, we don't – I feel like after that Sunday, we always say throw that throw these last games behind us. Like, they're over with. You can never go back and play Purdue again. You can never go back and play Penn State again, anybody. So, I mean, uh, I try to tell them, even if we left the game out of a high, I mean, you kind of got to let it go and move on because if, if you don't execute this next game, like – they're going to be talking about how bad we were. So uh, I, I try to tell the guys to stay level-headed, just to uh, try to execute every single play as best we can, and so we can uh, put up numbers like we do. CJ, you, you've mentioned a couple times post-game your relationship with Jackson. And how that was a big part of you coming from. Could you elaborate on how you guys met and, and what it was that convinced you that this was a place for you because of him? Yeah, so it was the opening in 2019, my junior year going to my senior year of high school. And I went uh, to the lead 11, but then we had the opening where it was like seven on seven. So I had uh, G, Scott, uh, Julian Fleming, and Legend Cavazos on my team. Uh, Jackson wasn't on my team, but he was still doing good at the camp. Uh, but those are the original guys, was Julian, Legend, and G, who were, uh, told the coaches about me and whatnot. And then Jackson kind of just hopped on board uh, when we, because he was committed as well. So it was real cool just to like have Ohio State even like trying to talk to me. So. Uh, of course, they all were the reason, because I'm really the reason I wanted really to come here. Uh, then when I came here, kind of just stamped it. Like we, they actually are a brotherhood, which I wanted to be a part of. So. CJ, I know you've been a leader in the room, but like with a guy with like Quinn Ewers coming in for the first time, you've had a year to grow. How have you assessed how Quinn has grown in the Ohio State quarterback? Yeah, I mean, he's getting better and better every week, which I'm uh, happy for. I, of course, I'll try to help him uh, just think like a, uh, like a, a college quarterback. I mean, it's kind of different from high school. You have more responsibilities. So I try to just uh, be a big brother to him, try to lead him, uh, try to get him better every day. And he's come a long way. I mean, he has a, a, a lot to work, a lot of work to do. Uh, all of us do, but I mean, Quinn, uh, of course, he's the youngest guy. He's fresh out of high school. So uh, I think he's he's doing a great job. He's trying to learn. How okay. unique is this situation? Just Could you have imagined leaving your senior year of high school? Like, how unique is that? Uh, I mean, it was his personal decision with his family. So I mean, I respect it. Uh, I, I try to help him. And, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, he kind of, uh, you lay in the bed you make, so uh, I think he made it the right decision, though. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, he can't go back, but I try to help him out whatever way he's feeling. I know he's kind of he was a little homesick, but I mean, I try to help him because I was homesick for a while too. CJ, you uh, didn't start in high school until your junior year. Um, you know, late through the whole, you don't know the story. You were like you almost hit yourself and said, "Man, this is really happening. This is happening so quickly. I've gone from that to this." Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I feel like God has a path for my life. And I mean, I always remember the scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path straight. So, I mean, that's kind of how I try to live my life, is just not relying on my own understanding. I, I, if it was up to me, I wouldn't be here. I, wouldn't, I don't know where I would be right now. So, I mean, I just thank God to even allow me to be at this great university, be around these great people, these great coaches, these uh, great brothers. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm truly blessed. CJ, the, the first touchdown you guys scored against Purdue, you threw it to Garrett, Garrett came on that race to the pilot. Coach Day said you, you got the offense into that play based off what you saw. Um, what gave you confidence to make that call there, and how much growth do you think you have made in terms of seeing stuff and getting the offense into the right direction? Yeah, I mean, uh, that particular play, we kind of knew that we were coming in and we are going to get zero uh, a lot. So, I mean, a lot of zero pressure. So. Uh, the first snap of the game was zero, so I don't know, it was kind of crazy. But um, I, I, I've been doing it all year. It wasn't just that game or that look, but I feel like the coaches have trust me to uh, be able to be a coach on the field. So, I mean, I feel like that, that's a plus for our offense. If I can uh, see what the coaches are seeing and uh, get it done quicker, then the defense can't check out of it and then, uh, of course, uh, try to score. So, I mean, I feel like the uh, Coach Days trust me, uh, uh, Coach Wilson, uh, Coach Dennis, and they're all really uh, – doing a great job in meetings, trying to get me the right looks, the right film to watch. So uh, it's all coming together. CJ, you may not, you know, pay attention to your own personal stats. However, do you pay attention to, like, other people's stats on other teams or even other team stats in general? Uh, no, sir. I try to just rely on – I mean, look at us and, and try to just focus on what we're doing. Uh, I mean, I don't really necessarily know if I really – I'm worried about anybody else but us. I feel like that's just football, the nature of it. But I mean, it, uh, 
I'm not sure. Yeah, I just try to focus on that. So if somebody were to tell you that Michigan State State ranks dead last in the entire country in passing yards defense, would that resonate with you at all, or is it? Yeah, I mean, we see the numbers every week. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, if we don't go out there and worry about us. I mean, we're worried about them, and we're not focused on our job. Of course, we have to we have to deal with their defense. They're, they do a great job now. They don't, they're not just scrubs when it comes to uh, pass, I mean, uh, pass coverage and things of that sort. So, I mean, uh, I'm not sure what the stats are with that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to focus like you're playing against the best players because uh, you'll go in there, you'll get punched in the mouth. So. CJ, do you, do you feel, what's the word you would use? Do you feel blessed that you've got these three receivers who seem to be outstanding in a lot of respects? I mean, what, what is it like to be throwing the ball to that group of receivers? You, you follow my drift. Yeah, for sure, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a blessing to be around this whole team. I mean, my old line is awesome. Uh, my running backs are awesome. My tight ends are awesome. I always say this, but it, it's really true. Like, my receivers do a great job. And I feel like just them doing their job, I feel like I do my job well as well. So uh, when it comes to that, I feel like when we're all clicking and we're doing the right things, um, it just feels good. So, I mean, it's definitely a great feeling to go out there and just have trust in the brothers. I know they have trust in me to make the right calls, make the right protections, uh, change the play if I need to. So uh, it, it's a really good feeling.